Welcome to the driveway. We're not doing outdoor things today. We're going to work on some robot parts, some components for combat robots. As some of you know, I'm also affiliated with, with a, a site called Enigmatic Electronics. I'm around the edges. I'm not one of the core members, but uh, I've been around those guys forever. And they've started up a little combat robotics competition in my community. I used to go down to robot battles in Atlanta, which is one of the, I think it's the second longest running combat battle type events in, in the country at least, maybe the world, but the country. And today I'm just going to do a little tutorial on how to turn this into this. Basically we're just removing the motor from the cordless drill, which can be a little bit tricky and it's, it's a basic skill to have. These will become your drive motors, sometimes your, your weapon motors. They're great. Uh, some of these uh, drills can be had for as little as 20 bucks at, at your local uh, big store, Walmart, whatever. And uh, I've had these given to me. <laughs> I'm the tight wad of the group. So uh, I, I kind of pride myself on recycling everything and not having a lot of money and stuff. So this is the cheap man's uh, way to get drive motors for your robot. A lot of people will have these drills and the, the uh, batteries will go dead and the battery replacements are so expensive they'll just throw the whole thing away. Okay, the first thing you're going to have to do is remove this chuck. And there's a couple of different uh, problems you might run into. Typically, there's a screw down in there, always, and it's going to be either a Phillips head or one of these star points. Sometimes they'll come right off. They are usually uh, righty, not tidy, instead of righty, tidy, loosey goosey. So you got to kind of feel. Sometimes you can call the manufacturer and find out, but it can get really stiff. Sometimes they'll come right off. Sometimes you have to use a little bit of assistance. Just to get it, so there we go. Okay, so that's going to come right out. If that's a, there we go. So this screw, I cannot stress the importance of this screw. Whatever value you place on the drill, put it in that screw. If you lose this, the, the, the uh, whole project is worthless. Okay, now we got to take the chuck out. Now remember when you unscrewed this screw, it was righty, untidy, opposite of, of what you would think of as a conventional screw. This one's going to be uh, righty, tidy, uh, lefty, loosey, like most screws in, in North America are. So we have just uh, tightened this Allen wrench in here. You can also use a ratchet if you don't have, most people like really long Allen wrenches, so they have more torque. You can use something like this, just so you have a longer handle, but I've had pretty good luck with these little standard little short allen wrenches. Uh, sometimes this process can be a booger. Uh, make sure this is on really tightly and I just hang it off the edge. Some people use a vise and, and again I'm wanting to go conventionally so I want to go counterclockwise to knock this off. It spins freely both ways because it has a reverse and a positive. The chuck will just move either way. So you have to deliver a sharp blow to this to break it loose so that it'll come off. So I just, okay, there, first try, it, it came off. Okay, now this will just unscrew. And I hope you can see that, it's just coming right off. And there you go, there's your chuck. And now to the dis disassembly of the casing. Some, some of these drills, they're all a little bit different. The pieces will just pop off, but, um, there are going to be some screws I need to remove, and I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, show you where I'm at after that. Okay, and when I'm done, I take all the extra bits that don't roll away in the floor. <laughs> take all the extra bits from each drill, and I put them in a freezer bag. All the screws, put in the casing, just in case need something out of that. I don't keep it forever. Or I don't intend to keep it forever. Sometimes it stays a lot longer than I want it to. But uh, I save all that. I set it aside. But the screw, remember I told you this screw is almost irreplaceable. I go ahead and I, I replace that. Again, it's opposite. It's contrary to what you'd think. I go ahead and put that in so that I do not lose it. 
And uh, if, I, if you remember one tip from this whole tutorial, it's put that screw back in so you don't lose it. All right. I'm going to show you a little bit about wheel mounting and also a problem. Uh, these little holes where the, these uh, bearings fell out, there's one that didn't completely come out. If you spin this, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it. Every so often you're going to see a little uh, high point come through. And then there are these valleys. If you don't drive something down in there, a grub screw or, or something, probably three or four of them, it's going to give you a problem. Uh, you're not going to have much torque, and I'll show you. Uh, this is just a little caster wheel, a little plastic when I tore off something else. Remember, I like to recycle. Here's our screw that I told you not to lose, and I have just, uh, by trial and error, found a couple of uh, washers. I'm going to put one there. This is how you mount a wheel. I have drilled this plastic out so that it'll fit there. I'm going to put the other washer on our screw and then I'm going to put this in here. Okay, and remember they're they're opposite. This screw is opposite. It is a Phillips head, so we're going to tighten it down. And even though I know it's opposite, there's just an ingrained desire to go the other way. Okay, now there's our, our mounted wheel. What's going to happen if you don't put some, some kind of a, a, a screw or some way to block this, when you put your power to it, this is awkward the way I'm holding it. So if I get far enough back here where you'll see it. See, it just stops. There's no real torque to it because that's going to continue to spin in there. So you have to you have to block those. Again, they're they're like these little teeth on it. There's a valley, and then there's teeth in between these little holes. Let me get this other one. In between these little holes, there's a valley, and that spins. That whole setup spins in there. So what you got to do is drive a screw down into these little holes so that it catches, and then you're going to get the torque you need so that it doesn't stop when it when it's got any weight on it. Again, let's let's show you this. My fancy. See, it just stops. You sure don't want that with a compound, a combat robot. Uh, <laughs> the first time it runs into something or has a little weight on it, you don't want it to stop. So, I don't have any grub screws. I'm gonna have to run to town. So I went to town, and I'm a, in a small rural community, and they didn't even know what grub screws were. So, <laughs> what I'm gonna have to do is take these screws, which is what I've got in the house. Got some old screws I, I took out of something else, wood screws of some kind. I'm going to sand the heads off. See how the heads are sanded off? And I'm going to measure the depth of these little holes because I want them to be flush with that metal plate underneath there. And I get a line there. And I'm going to cut these, grub, these screws, these homemade screws off. I'm going to leave enough room for the head, but then I'm going to go down here and cut this thing off the length I need it. And here I am making my homemade grub screws. <laughs> you can see I've sanded off. I've taken a grinding wheel and I've grinded this off. It won't be perfect. It'll stick out. A true grub screw, would, the head would go down in the hole too. But I've marked my length and I'm going to use my bolt cutters. Put it in there to the marked length. And then, tip of the day, these things go flying when you cut them, so there you go. And there's my little grub screw. I'll take the grinding wheel and take those burrs off, but that's all I need. Okay, now, as I was saying, I live in a small town and I needed a grub screw to go down in these little holes and press this plate that's hidden in here down so that I would have torque in this motor and it could be used for robotics. So you can't see it, but when you turn this wheel, there are little teeth that pop up in there and you want to drive these screws in in the valleys, not, not on top of the teeth, but between the teeth. And that will stop the uh, that from happening so that we can actually I'm looking down through there and, and making sure I'm, I'm screwing it in the right place we want it so that this thing 
will not just stop when it hits the surface. So you see how this screws, this wood screw that I've made into something else is working and, and it'll reach a point of resistance. We don't want resistance, we don't want it to be too tight, but we've measured it so it should screw right up to the head. Okay. And already it won't turn, but we're going to do four of these for this motor. That's the difference those uh, little grub screws make. It's going to resist stopping. It's actually leaving marks in the table. So that's what that does for you, uh, stopping, driving something down in there to stop that plate from spinning. If you don't do that, it's not going to help you very much.